Hello people, Anix here and thanks for joining me today to talk about Words of Radiance, book two in Sanderson's epic series, The Stormlight Archive. You know, I went into this book with high expectations because I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed The Way of Kings. If you want, you can check out my spoiler-free review of that book to see me sing its praises for like 15 minutes. So when I started this, I wondered, can this one be as good? Can Sanderson build up on the epic setup of that first book? Can anything top Kaladin's character work in The Way of Kings? Let's answer all of those questions and more in this week's 5-point review. Like always, this video is split into categories that I'm going to use to discuss the book in more depth. You know the drill, timestamps in the description, skip ahead if you want to. The first couple of these points are spoiler free for those of you who haven't read the book yet, and then I'll give you a fair spoiler warning when I'm going to start discussing spoilers. Without further ado, number one, the characters. A couple weeks ago, I talked about how The Way of Kings was pretty much all set up. It sets up the world, it sets up the characters, and it sets up the conflict. But now, we definitely move beyond that, especially in the character sense. Last time, we got to know Kaladin and Dalinar and Shalan and Adolin while they were moving within their respective distinct circles. In this one, we get to see them interact with each other. I love, love, love when authors do this with point of view characters. Joe Abercrombie does this masterfully in his first law series, and Brandon Sanderson does it brilliantly here too. Because they've been designed and explained really well in that first book, it's such a pleasure to see them interact with each other. In fact, some of my favourite scenes in this book are page after page of these people just talking to each other. Adolin's sunny, maybe a bit simple worldview contrasts brilliantly with Kaladin's gruff, gloomy outlook on life. Dalinar's noble and commanding character creates great conflict with Kaladin's hatred of the Light Eyes. Shalan's wit and humour dances circles around all of these people and it's all so much fun. Also, when they interact, the parallels between their character traits and their backstories start to become way more obvious. You understand both of the characters way more by the way that they talk to each other and what they share with each other. This wouldn't have worked nearly as well if we didn't have all of book one to set them up as individual people and get to know them all personally. The Way of Kings was Caradon's story. It had the occasional flashback chapters to tell us who he was and how he became the Caladin that we see at the start of the book. Words of Radiance shows Shallan's backstory and this one is even better. I wasn't overly curious about Shallan's past at the end of book one. The little bit of information that she murdered her father was interesting, but I don't think there was much to it beyond that. But after I read the first couple flashback chapters in this, I realised just how wrong I was. Her past left such a strong emotional impact on me. It was brutal and horrible, but in a much more subtle way than Kaladin's backstory. Her relationship with her father is brilliantly complex as well. The depth to Shallan's character revealed here is amazing, and I'll talk about it more in the spoiler section as well. Number two, the other stuff. The problem with doing a non-spoiler review of the second book in a series is that, unless I want to repeat a lot of the stuff from the first video, there's not a lot more to say. For example, the world building in book one was fantastic. I was blown away by its depth and its breadth. The same sort of applies here as well. Sanderson takes us across the continent in those interlude chapters to show us all the different countries and their cultures. I think the exposition dumps have gotten a bit less obvious in this one too. It feels much better integrated into the story. I wasn't a huge fan of the Shardbearer fights on the last one, but in this book, they're written much better. The fights are actually evenly matched, which makes it way more interesting to read. There's one chapter especially which is just a really long duel and is written brilliantly with some great tensions and stakes. The surge binding fights have also stepped up in… badassery? Now that we know that Kaladin has some weird abilities, we get some really fun training sequences and some great combat sequences. I think Kaladin picks up those abilities a bit too easily in those scenes though. I would have expected it to take a bit longer for him to get good, and I wanted to see a bit more of a natural progression to that. But honestly, I don't care that much because of how awesome the final fights are. The last 100-200 pages are so epic in scope. If this was turned into a film, I would pay money just to see that last 200 pages in IMAX. It's so magnificently cinematic. One other complaint of the first book was the lack of a proper plot. There was a lot of just walking around and learning about the world before anything significant happened at the end. In book two, this isn't so much of a problem. Mind you, there is still a lot of time spent learning about the world and the characters and just living in this world. It is a thousand pages after all. Not all of it is packed with action and excitement. But unlike last time, this book is building up to its climax right from the beginning. All of our main characters have specific goals which are linked with each other to an extent and the whole book is leading towards them trying to achieve those goals. 
There's a rising sense of tension and excitement and foreboding in this book right from the start. All of this is augmented by a literal in-world countdown to the end of the book. In Words of Radiance, you get a stronger sense of having read a whole story in one book, which I didn't feel as much in The Way of Kings. That's pretty much it for the non-spoiler stuff. I think we've kind of already answered the three questions from the intro. I personally think Words of Radiance is better than The Way of Kings. I think it uses the great base created in the first book to move the story forward and develop all the characters even more. And like I talked about already, it improves on a lot of things that could be considered as weaknesses in The Way of Kings. And if nothing else, Shallan's character work is phenomenal and it was so much more impactful for me than Kaladin's. It's just a fantastic book overall. I feel like a terrible reviewer talking about only the positives, but I genuinely can't think of any negatives. This is your spoiler warning if you haven't read Words of Radiance. I'm going to be talking about more specific plot points, about characters, and about that ending. In 3, 2, 1, number 3, Shallan. In book 1, any time it came to Kaladin's flashback chapters, I was just curious most of the time. I read them to see how all of the clues about his past fit together. There was a really good build-up of mystery and an anticipation of a build-up to a tragedy in all of it. I had a very different experience with Shallan's backstory. After realising what sort of past she had, I was dreading reading her chapters. I read with a morbid fascination every time to see what new horrible thing was going to happen to her in this one. About halfway through, I thought I understood it so well. I mean, it was a horrible and creepy story about an abusive father who ruined a family and she had to kill him in the end. So that last section took me completely by surprise. Man, finding out it was Shallan who killed her mother and not her father was the final nail in the metaphorical coffin of tragedy. His death chapter was written so well and it hit me so hard how she was crying and singing to him while she was killing him. I think the tragedy was further enhanced by the contrast that we see between Shallan in the past and the Shallan in the story now. Caradin held on to the anger and grief of his past. He wallowed in it to fuel his present actions. I thought Shallan represented a great contrast to show how other people deal with such deep personal trauma. She just decided to completely block it out of her memory so that she wouldn't have to suffer. I think what stepped up her character work even more was how it related to her spren. The inherent nature of Patton meant that she was forced to come to terms with her past and I thought that dynamic worked really well. Knowing both her and Kaladin's past so well, I loved the chapters when they were stuck in the chasm together. The dialogue was smart and witty and enjoyable, the back and forth was so much fun. I really liked Shallan's speech as well when Kaladin accuses her of living an easy and naive life. The jarring switch between the fun and the jokes to that serious moment makes it work so much better as well. Their relationship grew beautifully in that chapter too. I was hoping for something like that when they first ran across each other outside the camps and she steals his boots. I really hope Sanderson isn't building towards a love triangle though. I like Kaladin and Shallan and Adolin. I'd be okay with whoever they fall in love with, but I really, really don't like love triangles as storylines. Actually, I think I prefer that Kaladin and Shallan form a deep personal friendship based on their shared trauma, but I get the feeling that there's much more developing than that, especially from Kaladin's side. Number 4. Morally Grey This book made everything a lot more grey. Let's start with the Pashendi. Their culture and mannerisms are so unique, the way they communicate by singing in different rhythms is fascinating. In the last book, I was mostly just cheering while Kaladin massacred so many of them in that final fight. Now, as we learn more about their past and their struggles for survival, those battles feel a lot less glamorous. I thought it was great how they weren't just inherently evil because they were the Voidbringers. Seeing the truth of their existence and following how their struggle for survival because of the near decimation of their population by humanity led them to naturally turn into the Voidbringers was just tragic. I really enjoyed Kaladin's struggle with right and wrong as well. I could totally understand why he would want to kill Elokar, but I was so grateful that he didn't actually do it. It was great how it also tied into his growth to become the Knight's Radiant. Elokar's talk with Kaladin at the end also gave the king an unexpected depth. And it further helped Kaladin make the decision that he should always protect those who can't protect themselves, no matter how he personally feels about them. That is what it truly means to be honourable. And of course, that leads to my favourite character, Syl, coming back to life, and then that leads to all the awesome moments in the end. Before we talk about that though, I want to just quickly mention one of Shallan's storylines in this book. I wasn't the biggest fan of her stuff with the ghost bloods. I mean, it was cool to see her use her light powers when she was sneaking around. That reminds me, 10 different magic systems in a single series? Sanderson's really going all out with this thing, isn't he? They're all unique and interesting and I can't wait to see them used more in the next book. 
Anyways, back to Shalon. I was much more interested in her doing her scholarly work and the stuff that was happening while she was traveling towards the Shattered Plains. Maybe the ghost blood stuff will become more interesting in the later book, but at the moment, I don't care too much about them. Number five, the ending. The climax of Words of Radiance was awesome. First of all, the literal atmosphere for the final fight was great. It was dark and raining and there was thunder and lightning. The Voidbringers were lined up on the other side with their red eyes shining in the dark and their eerie songs sweeping over the troops. It was perfect. There was a constant tension in the fight too because there was a very clear goal to the battle. Stop the Bashendi from finishing their song. I just wish that we had seen more of the messy fighting in those chapters. We spent most of the time with Dalinar who was commanding from the back. Shalan's quest had a pretty good climax too. The way she revealed herself as a Knight's Radiant and Dalinar just filled up with joy and hope was so sweet. The whole book while he was trying to rebuild the Knight's Radiant, I kept waiting for either Shalan or Kaladin to tell him and I'm so happy that they both told him in the end. The way the whole plateau turned out to be a portal and so all the troops were saved was a bit convenient and I could see it coming a mile off, but that's fine. The best thing about that ending though was Kaladin. I knew Syl had to have something to do with the shard blades because that's why the blades in Dalinar's visions were glowing. It was awesome how she actually became the sword and then a shield and then a hammer and then an axe and a spear depending on whichever one he needed. When Dalinar gets thrown up into the air and Kaladin rescues him and flies down to land and fight the assassin, that was epic. I reread that whole fight scene like 10 times. My inner child couldn't stop squealing. I was imagining something like Thor's entrance in Ragnarok or Infinity War. Just fantastic. It was all augmented because we saw a sliver of what he could do in the training and then we spent some time with a powerless Kaladin. So him getting all of his powers back and more was so much more satisfying than it otherwise would have been. Just one last thing I want to mention is Sadius' death. Like damn Adolin, I didn't think he had it in him. I really hated Sadius, even though I could see how he thought he was the hero of his own story. At the end, when he was talking about how he was still going to try and ruin Dalinar's reputation, I kept hoping that Adolin would do something, but I didn't think he was going to take such drastic measures. Now a really interesting kernel's been planted for his future growth and I'm really excited to see where it goes. Overall, what a fantastic book. Top-notch world building, top-notch character work, top-notch action and top-notch story. What more would you want? So yeah, I definitely like Words of Radiance more than The Way of Kings. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I was going to pace myself to finish Oathbringer just before book 4 comes out, but that's too long. So I'm going to start it today and I'll probably finish it in the next 5 to 10 days. I have a special and maybe unique style of review planned for that book. The only clue I can give you is that I'm going to start filming the review before I start reading the book. If you've enjoyed this video and you've watched up to here, then you're going to love that video for sure. So make sure you smash that subscribe button to catch that and more weekly reviews. Other videos I have planned to come out in the next couple weeks include one about if Dune is worth a read and one about my thoughts on the invisible life of Addie LaRue. In the meantime, like, share, comment, you know, all that YouTube stuff. Thanks for watching. Till next week. See ya.